Good evening, Tracy. I'm Rod Singh, your host from Six of Tracy Page, and I have my co-host with Deja Twal along with me. And today we are live to talk about measures. So one of the measures that's uh, relatively very much in the visible, high visibility is Measure Y. So there are a lot of questions and clarifications um, uh, people are asking for. What is Measure Y? So that is the reason we are today hosting this informative session with different folks who can give the answer, who can provide the information uh, for us so we can make the uh, educational decision of what is right thing to do on your ballot. So that being said, I just want to put the disclaimer out there today. We are not endorsing or suggesting to vote yes or no on this measure. We're just keeping it informative session. Uh, now I would like Gritej to introduce our panel today so we can get going and start uh, going over the measure questions. Thank, thank you very much, Raj. So as we all are here for an informative discussion on Valley Link as well as Measure Y, I'll request Bob to please briefly introduce himself. Hi, I'm Bob Gutierrez. I'm the interim president and CEO of the San Joaquin Partnership. Thank you for having me today. Thank you very much, Bob. Dino, please. Good afternoon. My name is Dino Margaros, and I am the executive director for Tracy City Center Association, now known as Downtown Tracy. Thank you very much, Dino. Michael? Hey, thanks for inviting me. I'm Michael Tree. I'm the executive director with the Tri-Valley San Joaquin Valley Regional Rail Authority, which is planning the Valley Link project. Thank you very much, Michael. Vince? I'm Vince Moreno. I'm the associate broker with California Advantage Real Estate and Tracy Family since 86. Thank you very much, Vince. Dan? Hi, uh, Dan Ariola, council member for the city of Tracy. Thank you very much, Dan. Rhodesia, please. Hi, I'm Rhodesia Ransom, council member for the city of Tracy as well. Thank you very much, all. Thank you for being here. So let's start with our first uh, question of this session. So will you please explain what Valley Link right, uh, light rail is? Great question. Uh, I'll take that question. <laughs> the, uh, the Valley Link Rail is a passenger rail project. Uh, I'm sure most of us are really familiar with the traffic that's on the 205 and the 580 going in between uh, the uh, San Joaquin County and the Bay Area. So uh, that traffic's nearly 100,000 commuters a day. And uh, in 2017, AB 758, which was authored by Assemblymember Eggman, set up the Tri-Valley San Joaquin Valley Regional Rail Authority to come up with a transportation alternative in that alignment. And so that, uh, that project is now known as the Valley Link Passenger Rail Project. And in short, Valley Link uh, is broken into two phases. Phase one is a 42 mile seven station phase which goes between the ACE North Lathrop station down uh, through the River Islands development into downtown Tracy, where you have your, his, your uh, train depot onto a station, which is known as the Mountain House station, then up and over the Altamont into two stations in Livermore before the train uh, goes into the Dublin Pleasanton Bard station. And so the essence is uh, jump on Valley Link uh, and, uh, you'll have a quick, easy connection with BART into the Bay Area. Um, just a couple of other things about uh, what is Valley Link. Uh, the uh, train is estimated to have 33,000 passengers uh, per day in the year 2040, and also a GHG reduction or an emission savings of between 33,000 uh, tons, metric tons of GHG per year to 42,000 tons of GHG uh, metric, uh, tons of GHG reduction, uh, depending on the technology that's used. So the uh, most likely technology for the train is a zero emission technology where we would have catenary lines in the Altamont uh, and uh, the train would run on batteries uh, in the Tri-Valley section and also the San Joaquin section. Probably just a, a couple of other tidbits of information uh, in regard to the Valley Link project, uh, we're hoping to have the train up and running uh, in late 2027 to early 2028. And uh, important to note uh, in regard to the construction of the train is that uh, it will create uh, 22,000 jobs 
with an economic impact in the region of $3.5 billion. And during operation, the train would uh, have an economic impact of creating 400 jobs with $69 million of impact per year. So that's a, just a, a quick uh, couple of comments in regard to the Valley Link train. We're excited. It, it is being planned in entirely existing transportation corridor rights of way. So uh, we're hoping for an efficient way of getting the train up and going uh, quickly for uh, commuters. Thank, thank you very much, Michael. Appreciate it. One thing uh, comes to my mind. Will you please explain briefly what the GHG reduction is? Yeah, so that's a greenhouse gas emissions reduction. So there's, uh, there's approximately 99.4 uh, million vehicle miles traveled uh, that would be a reduction and associated with the Valley Link project in 2040. And that would create these emission savings and uh, help with the uh, climate change and uh, the other uh, concerns with uh, the environment that we worry about as we travel in these automobiles. Thank you very much, Michael. So now I'll take it back to Raj to take us further into the discussion. So Raj, I think you're on mute. So Raj, I think you're on mute, so have to unmute. Thank you. No, still, still on mute. So still on mute, Raj. So I think I'll go with the second question. So uh, the second question is, so will you please explain what transit oriented development is? Um, I think Rhodesia and I can talk about that. I'll let, I'll let Rhodesia go ahead and, and start off. Rhodesia, you're on mute, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. So thank you uh, for that question. Uh, Transit-oriented development is a very uh, simple concept. It's a concept in regional planning that really orients how you um, do business, how you live, work, and uh, entertain yourself in regards to um, building a community that's built around transit. It's so people can get to work, you have walkable neighborhoods, you'll have access to, whether it's entertainment, restaurants, um, jobs, and so, um, it's one of those things where you see in the downtown area specifically, um, a lot of different cities will see that that's a, a really uh, thing being able to connect transit to people. Um, and when you have a transit oriented development, it's pretty dense in regard to in the um, proximity to the actual transit, whether it's train, um, whether it's um, boats, so or it depends on what kind of community you're in. In our community, a transit oriented development would be connected very much with the uh, ACE rail or the Valley Link um, once that's completed. And it's a way to make sure that there is enough uh, passengers, it's enough, um, you know, to keep the economy going. It would actually help build an economy in a, per a particular area. So transit oriented development is very regionally oriented around transit and brings all of the elements of what you need to have a community into one area. Exactly. And, and to piggyback a little bit off of what Rhodesia said, as it relates to our downtown, it's, it's an urban planning type of plan. It's a design of uh, residential businesses, leisure space, walking paths, parks, those kinds of things, all within a half mile, all related to uh, transit oriented development, which is, you know, the train, Valley Link train. So it's trying to blend the train and, and the, the living spaces and the leisure spaces and combining them into our downtown space so you know it's a win-win synergistic um uh positive project for for our downtown thank, thank you very much rodicia and dino so now i will request rod to continue us in further discussion i think this time i'm on a, on on not mute i get probably people can't even listen to me Okay, um, so our next question is, we covered the what Valley Link is, what TOD is, transit oriented development. Now the main question comes, um, as our show says, what is Measure Y? So can you guys explain to the audience, to the voters, 
what is measured by? All right, I can kind of tackle that one. Uh, so what Measure Y is, is for the city of Tracy specifically, it creates that transit-oriented development area that Dino and Rodizia were just talking about it. It creates that area near pro existing or proposed uh, rail stations. And so what that means for the city and Tracy in particular is it, it allows the city council to designate those areas that are proposed to be this transit-oriented development. So when we talk about transit-oriented development, what it is, is it's this idea, right? It's kind of this theory of how to build a city. What Measure Y does, it connects the theory to the law and it codifies it within the Tracy Municipal Code so that we can actually enact it. And what it does is it creates language that matches the requirements of the proposals, particularly for Valley Link, uh, to make sure that we can meet those standards so that when Valley Link comes, we make sure that it comes to Tracy. And so I think that there has been a, there's been a lot of confusion about a lot of the language. Unfortunately, this is why people hate lawyers because it's very tough. Um, but what it does is it amends the a municipal code for Tracy in particular to match the absolute requirements necessary for Valley Link. And also some of the other things that we've seen uh, when applying for state federal funding to meet the needs that we can uh, have the TOD here in Tracy so that we are the most attractive for grants and then so that we qualify for that actually the station here in Tracy in downtown Tracy for Valley Link. We as a council in having the discussion about it, there's been discussion about the housing component. So what it does is it one of the requirements for Valley Link is to have the 2200 units. And so we kind of played around with it. And so a lot of the gritty details that go into the law are about the differences in the housing. So for the 2,200 housing units, it doesn't mean that they're going to get built, but what it means is that they have the capacity to be built, which is a requirement for Valley Link. And what we did is we actually put in some inclusionary housing requirements so that 10% of own, any ownership units and 10% of any rental units are going to be set at affordable housing levels. And this was me being a complete nerd at the city council meeting, uh, but we really got into the details and connecting the law to the language so that it's focused on Tracy median income levels. And so 5% is at the 100% uh, median income level for rentals. And then 5% is at the 80% of uh, median income level for Tracy for rentals as well. And just so everyone knows the average income in Tracy, the median level is 88,000. And so basically you take the 88,000 and then, uh, you, you that's how you get you do the math there but because it gets tricky you want to write the law so it's attached to the median levels and not a certain number so that that way when the median income level fluctuates we've already taken care of it so basically what measure Y does is it's a voter measure to make sure that we have voter excuse me transit oriented development here in tracy and it's written in such a way to make sure that we maintain those qualifications and that we really are giving us the flexibility we need to build that focused transit oriented development in downtown Tracy. And that's basically what it does. And it's one of the requirements that we need to make sure that Valley Link gets to Tracy. Thank you very much. Would you look in? Yeah, go ahead, Dan. Thank you, Dan, for covering that. Um, I have a clarifying question. Um, you said the requirement is to build the 122 units, but on the same side, you said they may or may not happen. Can you kind of explain on that? If it's a requirement, then wouldn't it doesn't it become a mandatory to build that many units? No. So basically, the 2200 housing unit requirement is part of the um, it's the it's the requir it's a requirement for Valley Link, but it's the capacity. For 2200 units so think of this as a capacity versus actually doing it so this is still going to need to go through the planning commission you know this doesn't mean that all of a sudden we're going to build to 2200 units but we need to have the capacity to do it because that's how you build actual transit oriented development moving forward uh you know this is this is the the type of residency of the future we're trying to get cars off the road and for a lot of particularly young professionals people like uh you know, me when I lived in downtown LA, I didn't have a car. You you don't have a car because you can walk to your grocery store. You can walk to your orient uh, the the uh, excuse me the TOD stations for your job, and so that's the whole point of it. So it's not to make sure that 2,200 units are here, but it's the capacity to do it. 
and it's and it's built in a specific type of way so it's all centralized right there in downtown tracy we're trying to oppose urban sprawl so it's focused there right there in downtown tracy so you can go ahead and get your food in downtown tracy you can hang out and have fun in downtown tracy and you can get to your job from that station in downtown tracy so it's the capacity is required per the law but any proposal will have to go through the planning commission it's still going to go through those normal processes it just makes the capacity to build those units available which would be a requirement to bring that station to Tracy. Otherwise, it'll go right on by. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, th thank you very much, Dan. No, so, thank you for explaining that. It does, does make sense. That answers the overall question, so thank you. Yeah, so then one thing is, so the major why it does is it ties the station with transit-oriented development. So can another way we can say that it is solely tied to the station itself also? So if there is yes, that means station will be there. If there is no no station, then Tracy. Sorry, can you, I didn't hear that last part. So I was trying to say, so is Major White, we can say another way, we can say it is tied to the train station as well. If there is yes, that means there is a station. If there is no, that means there is no station in Tracy. If we don't have a transit oriented development plan for downtown Tracy, we do not qualify for the stations along the corridor for Valley Link. So okay. if we want, so it's Valley Link is a separate entity and they have certain requirements for joining Valley Link. And that's, we've been, the city of Tracy has been a, a part of that as part of the board, but they set those requirements. So the city of Tracy wants to make sure that we have a stop here in Tracy, we have to meet those requirements. It's the same thing that we do for a lot of other state and federal programs. We have to create the law and zone in particular ways to qualify. So if we want a station in downtown Tracy, yes, we do need that transit origin development plan in place and that's what measure y does and i think uh michael Tree could, could qualify or could talk a little bit about the funding mechanism yeah. really what we're talking about is the requirement for to a qual to, for the competitive funding nature on state and federal level so if michael could just chime in and clarify a little bit on the funding nature that's really what we're talking about here yeah you know that's uh it's it's a really good point um as you create your station area plans, your TOD development, you not only qualify for the train per the uh, policy that the board has set, but you also increase your chances greatly as we look for state and federal funding uh, based on the fact that you do have that TOD uh, plan in place. It's a huge uh, issue, climate change, and being able to create development and have public transit in a way that reduces that greenhouse gas emissions. So is it okay if I provide some clarification? I think it's important to know that uh, Measure Y is actually, it's us giving the voters a chance. So we, we say that we wanna be able to have the Valley Link. We're saying that we want um, to be able to improve downtown and have people asking all the time why we don't have certain things in our town. Um, and then a lot of that goes into being able to meet basic requirements. It's just like when people ask me, why don't we have Trader Joe's? We don't meet requirements for Trader Joe's. That's why we don't have it. The same with Valley Link. So Valley Link has some very specific requirements. Um, in addition to that, we were already having conversations for many years about how we can actually enhance the downtown and how we can actually uh, build a more um, synergistic downtown where you can live, work, play, and access all of those things so that you have those synergies that actually build the economy there. The difference is, is that with Measure Y, um, it gives us the opportunity to say, yes, we will authorize the Planning Commission to approve additional units of housing down there. Um, and what we've also added was affordable by design. That did not have to be included in there, but we've heard our community very loud and clear when it comes to affordable housing. And we are looking um, to be able to meet the workforce affordable housing so that people who are holding jobs in our town can actually live here. So uh, with the Valley Link, they have the requirements. If we don't pass it, um, that's basically the voters saying that, you know, we don't, it doesn't matter to us that we don't meet the requirements for Valley Link. Um, so we are happy to have, I'm happy that Mr. Tree is here to explain it because he's the rail authority as opposed to me, a council member trying to explain 
the requirements of, of, the, of the rail authority. I think it's also important um, to know that other cities have been uh, very competitive in trying to also do what we're doing. Uh, we have Mr. Gutierrez here. Um, I serve on the um, Southern Partnership as a board member, and I, I really would love to hear what his take is in regards to how this actually helps our local economy as well. Well, thank you for that, Councilmember Ransom. Um, pleasure to be here today. Uh, great conversation, great opportunity ahead of the community. I think you've heard all the reasons why, you know, things like Measure Y can be a resource to a future in a community. Um, it attracts opportunities like Valley Link. It attracts the ability to have what you want in your own community. It also provides an opportunity for businesses to see that they have access to their workforce here in the Central Valley on, on a quick basis. Um, you know, this, this is going to be a quick service that goes through our community and it goes through your city and Tracy. So this will give a lot of opportunity to move um, workers, you know, in different sectors from the Central Valley over to the Bay Area and back and forth uh, in a timely manner. Um, we've worked a lot with a lot of brokers lately. And at the partnership, we're an economic development corporation. So we get an opportunity to sit in front of brokers on a regular basis. And what they're telling us is they need access to their workforce. They know they have, like Michael said, 100,000 people coming over to the hill each day for work. They need to get there quicker and they need to do it in a more economic way. Um, and so as we get more migration out of the Bay Area, this creates not only an opportunity, but a responsibility to making sure that we're not having more cars on the road as people are going back and forth to the Bay Area. And we're providing adequate transportation for that. Um, this is going to be a benefit for all of San Joaquin, uh, Tracy being in the center of that with their TOD. Um, you know, without an opportunity zone or redevelopment, uh, this is, again, a unique opportunity to pave the way for your future there in the city of Tracy. So you got you got some good folks working on this. And, you know, one of the other things I'll say is, you know, infrastructure development leads to economic growth in any community. And so when you have a plan in place, uh, businesses are attracted to that. We're getting calls constantly about not only how to get their employees over the hill, but also as a result of COVID, how can we have these smaller campuses here in the Central Valley, here in San Joaquin County, here in Tracy? So, you know, again, these are opportunities to create livable, workable entertainment areas that people can get to and from work, and they can also have those shared experiences within their own community as well, without having to go too far, but having access to go that far when they need to. So the, the remote worker of today is gonna have the opportunity to check in with their employer on a regular basis in the future now. And they might not have to go every day, but they're gonna go three days a week. And so it's transportation opportunities like this with Valley Link, and then having that TOD there in Tracy really allows an opportunity to grow your community to complement that so that we can have access to the Valley Link. So that's what we see in economic development. There's been some great partnership that have been forged uh, through this process. Uh, the San Joaquin Partnership works with the Bay Area Council Opportunity Stanislaus and the Great Sacramento Economic Development Council. And so we've actually uh, formed together with an MOU, our own Northern California neighbor. Why does that have a benefit to you? It's basically it allows us to leverage projects like this, concepts like TODs in our community with other partners outside the area that are also going to have a benefit to this. So Tracy doesn't have to carry all the heavy lifting themselves. We have great partners that are here to make it happen with you and will be there along the planning process. So that's what I have to say for economic development. I think you guys are on the right track and I think this is a great opportunity for the voters and Tracy to, to make an investment in their own community. No, th thank you very much, Bob. So now we know what Measure Y is, transit-oriented development, and thank you for sharing the perspective of uh, economic development. Now let's move on to, so uh, can you share how much money is in the bank for this project? So I'll take that question. Um, yes, uh, so it's virtually unheard of that uh, a train being planned that's in the environmental process already has a third of its funding identified, but that's the case with Valley Link. Uh, just really quickly, you have $400 million in Measure BB, which is a 
local transportation sales tax in Alameda County that's been identified for the project. You have $188 million in bridge toll. Uh, you have uh, $80 million in developer fees uh, in Alameda County. Uh, the city of Tracy has provided an option to the rail authority for a $40 million property, a 200 acre parcel for the operations and maintenance facility for the train. And then also in the city of Lathrop within our feasibility report is identified $86 million in developer fees and tax increment. So all told uh, you have $708 million identified with an additional $86 million soon to come online uh, for the project. So it's off to a fantastic start. Again, it's virtually unheard of that a project that's just finishing up its EIR would have a third of the funding identified. So thank you, Michael. So you mentioned that one third of the funding. So we have the sources. Uh, thank you. Go ahead, Raj. Uh, not, not the, I think I just, I'm probably going to have the same uh, follow-up question. So you said we have the third uh, part of the funding for the project. So I think the main imperative question is to know where is the rest of the money going to come to uh, complete this project? Can you highlight uh, highlight us on that part? Well, certainly with uh, your uh, good start, uh, you have no money now that you can leverage. And so we're looking very closely at programs at the state level. The uh, TERSA program, which is uh, an SB1 program, uh, is available for the project. And so applications will be uh, flowing in the near future with this money is the local match. You've also have congested corridors funding at the state level. Uh, so San Joaquin Cog has been instrumental in setting up your congested corridor program uh, to include Valley Link. Uh, you also have a variety of federal funds which could be available for the project. Uh, new starts uh, could be a major component of funding the Valley Link uh, and also the build program, the infra program. Uh, so there are lots of opportunity. In particular, I would probably hone in on your federal stimulus money. Uh, the legislature certainly, as you're aware, is working on a stimulus infrastructure package. And this is the type of project that brings home uh, tens of thousands of jobs in the construction process. And uh, we'll certainly have the eye of the legislature. Certainly, certainly your congressman uh, has been working uh, towards uh, this project being included in such a federal stimulus infrastructure package. Look, th thank you very much, Michael. So you explained the app. So there is funding and what are the sources for that? So uh, next thing, can we just explore what kind of taxes, taxes which will be associated with Measure Y? So if I can take that one briefly. So the way that Measure Y is written, there's no, there's no tax increase. It basically just it creates the opportunity, the, the opportunity for the legal requirements uh, that are necessary. But there's no tax increase associated. Uh, that's why we need to work together to get the funding necessary. Yes, um, I would. I echo what uh, council member Ariola mentioned as well. Um, what we've seen for uh, the Valley League is that uh, certain com some communities like the Bay Area, they have their measure, that's their investment. They're, they're trying to uh, get approved so that they can actually uh, do their tax measure to uh, contribute. In our county, we've asked that it be prioritized. Um, so we finally got to the point where it's actually uh, been prioritized, but it's not a tax. Measure Y has no tax associated with the measure. Uh, that would have to be clearly written. It would be written as a tax. It's not a tax. It's written as um, the authorization to provide an exemption so that if there is a housing related to this transit-oriented development where there will be rail travel um, and we want the opportunity to um, compete with the Valley Link, then the voters will vote on that. There's no tax associated with it. We would have to be very clear about that. And that would have to um, go to the voters. Thank you very much, Rudisha. Now I'll request Raj to take us further into the conversation. Right. So this is this is very useful information. All that all you guys are sharing regarding Valley Link, um, Measure Y, the funds, and the tax. 
So I, I think the next thing that I think wanted to understand, do other cities nearby or any other cities, do they have the TOD transit oriented development? Well, Bob so left. Okay, go ahead, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll uh, I'll give you my thoughts on that. Um, certainly, it's a requirement of any station uh, planning that it have a minimum of twenty two hundred units within a half mile. So we have stations in Livermore, uh, we have station in Tracy, and we also have a station in River Islands, uh, which is part of Lathrop, and also the Ace North Lathrop station. So. All of those stations, except for what we call the Mountain House Station, which is really uh, in kind of a warehouse environment, probably not susceptible to having lots of housing units, but all of the other stations uh, currently have transit-oriented development planning in process. So some are just starting, others are far, far along. Uh, but uh, I think it's important to note, for example, River Islands has, uh, has discussion with the city of Lathrop to add an additional 4,000 units in the vicinity of the River Island station. Uh, both of the Livermore stations uh, have either a specific plan already in process, uh, which will be shortly approved by their council or they're in the process. Uh, each of those uh, Livermore stations having 4,000 housing units uh, around the station area. So, uh, you know, other stations do have TODs. It's a requirement for the train, and they're certainly taking advantage of an opportunity to really provide a lot of vitality around the stations, a lot of opportunity for mixed, uh, mixed development, uh, lots of pedestrian and biking opportunities near the station, which is really, uh, there are a lot of folks uh, who are um, who are creating a demand for that type of development, uh, which uh, not only helps the train, but certainly helps the community and the environment. Okay, thank you very and, much, Michael. So, and, and, and to piggyback yeah. a little bit on, on Michael, I, I think we, I wanna emphasize that the only reason we here in Tracy are even having this discussion is because of our GMO, which is the growth management ordinance. So you can see how critical it is and how they're you know, proceeding in Livermore with two stations, two, two of them, uh, River Islands and then North Lathrop. Uh, the reason we're having this discussion is because we're limited by our, our growth management ordinance for the housing component of this. And that's where the link is. Everybody's trying to find what is the link to this measure Y to the train. The link is, without the ability, and I think Dan really clarified, without the ability, not the guarantee of building these homes, but the ability to build these homes, the Valley Link train may not get funding on the San Joaquin County side. And then, you know, Michael might be able to talk a little bit about how that funding may or may not look, but, you know, it's just critical that we get something done. And we're the only, you know, municipality or, or city that's in this particular situation. The other ones, my understanding, and Michael could correct me, is that they don't, they aren't going through the same process because they don't have a GMO um, to deal with. That's correct. So, thank you very much, Michael and Dino. So uh, as you have mentioned, other cities, they have the plans of the stations. They have the similar TOD or transit oriented development plans. So are the requirements exactly same for those cities as the requirements are for Tracy or the requirements are different for different cities and different for different stations? From a Valley Link perspective, they're all the same. All the requirements are uniform throughout the uh, phase one of Valley Link. Okay, no, thank, thank you very much. So, and now we understand what the stations are, what transit oriented plan is and measure Y. So let's uh, move further into a discussion. So what kinds of trains would be used uh, in our train stations for Valley Link? That's a good question. Um, so the trains are called multiple unit trains. Uh, if any of you have seen the E-Bar train that uh, is circulating to, to Antioch, for example, that's a that's a multiple unit train. So it's not as large as a full locomotive train that you might see in freight. Um, but uh, these trains, uh, as uh, we're planning them, are three car trains that can be linked together. So ultimately, as ridership increases, you could have multiple three-car trains linked. Um, 
the trains, uh, basically, uh, we're looking at a variety of ways uh, or technologies for the train. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the most uh, likely scenario ultimately is to have Cantonary line in the Altamont section, which would hook to the train as it's traveling in the Altamont, feed it with electricity to have uh, lots of torque and power to operate quickly in the Altamont. And then when it's on the flat areas in the Tri-Valley and in the San Joaquin County, it would operate on battery. So a, a zero emission technology has been a really important goal uh, for the board of directors. Um, additionally, at the stations, we're planning for solar, uh, also at the operations and maintenance facility. So we're looking, we're really looking for sustainability and uh, low, if, if not uh, low to no impact uh, on the environment, being able to create our own energy for the train system. Thank you very much, Michael, for touching that. So as uh, so we are seeing this will drastically have an impact on our commuters. So what do you think? So how much impact will it have on the daily commuters that uh, will use the Valley Link train? So it's been our biggest problem in planning Valley Link is that uh, a lot of people want to ride Valley Link and it needs to have great connectivity, uh, not only in the San Joaquin County with the ACE system and the bus systems, but also in the Bay Area. And uh, our ridership modeling is showing in 2040, which is kind of a common number used to compare other transit uh, uh, projects that are in planning. Uh, our ridership modeling is showing 33,000 rides a day. So a significant impact on the 580. Yeah, no, th th thank you very much. Uh, so, yeah, commuters, you explained so, uh, the impact on the commuters. So, next, I have uh, a thing in mind. So, why does Measure Y include a housing component? Measure Y is the housing component of the. Uh, it, it's an opportunity to meet the requirements for the, the um, housing component. So, the only reason Measure Y had to be a measure is because we, with our current um, management ordinance, we could not commit to being able to meet the requirements of Valley Link. So we have to take it to the voters um, and see if the voters are, you know, um, equally committed to being able to meet those requirements. And that's, it's, it's a measure, the measure is about being able to meet the requirement, which is to provide the density in housing for the, the train. And, and it's not just um, other trains, you know, we wanna be able to, whatever the transit mechanisms are that can help get people off of the roads, um, we wanna make sure that if there is an opportunity to meet their requirements as well, that we can do that. So when we were in the council putting together this measure to bring before um, the community to say, we're, you know, where do we stand as a community? We kind of toyed around with, do we even wanna put Valley Link in there or do we just wanna, say you know commuter rail or what what language is is important to use because um, valley link can change your name but it's all about being able to um, connect transit to the housing in order to meet the requirements and also to have that synergy that builds on the community you don't just want a train to you know come through and not have that economic connection that economic development connection so that Measure Y is all about being able to meet the requirement for the housing, um, which is transit-oriented housing. And transit-oriented housing is synergistic, it's shopping, it's, you know, it's trails and all of those different things that we um, continue to speak about. And Mountain House was built as a transit-oriented community. River Islands was built as transit-oriented as well. And they're, they're, you know, adding to that. So we are in a unique situation that Ordinarily, this would just be a decision where to go to the planning commission. You know, we go through the council and say we want to meet the write this plan and start working this specific plan to meet the Valley Link uh, requirement. But our community is a little unique because we had a, a pre-existing um, management ordinance that we need to go to the voters and say, hey, this is what the opportunity is. Yes or no. Thank you very much, Rodicia. So there is another terminology that the voters would like to just kind of get clarification on. So what does bow tie area means? 
I'll take I'll take that one from a uh, historic Tracy uh, angle. Uh, so the bow tie refers to the area near Sixth Street and Central Avenue in downtown Tracy, and and where it came from is if you look at an overview from let's say Google Earth, the the land is kind of in the shape of a bow tie. It's got kind of like two triangles on either side of the uh, the roundabout. So we we just uh, affectionately refer to it as the bow tie, and that's kind of what it's been historically as it relates to our history as a uh, train uh, train town. So yeah. It's just uh, an affectionate name, you know, for that particular area of downtown. So uh, as this area, this is very much near the station or the planned Vellalink area. So will there be some cost associated to clean up the Bowtie area? If there will be, what do you expect what the cost would be? Sure, I can, I can speak to this. Um, in this case, there is actually um, precedent for the cleanup, um, some environmental impact reports that have been done. Um, two of these that I wanna bring to light, um, the first was written by um, a company called EIP Associates. This was back in February of 2007 um, to look at um, mitigating that land and bringing it up to residential standard. Um, at that time, they estimated that the cost of the entire cleanup for that area would be 11, just over $11 million. If you do account for current inflation, that puts that cost at 13.3 uh, million. Um, there was a second report that was written by Nino and Moore that was in February 2008, also to the city council. Um, and again, cleaning it up to residential standard, which is the highest um, standard for that area. Um, they pegged it at 10.5 million. And again, if you account for inflation, um, this total would be 12.7 in uh, 2020 dollars. Um, so there is cost associated with the cleanup. Um, that's not anything that's unknown for most people. Um, those are the costs that I've been able to see and basing them on inflation. That's about where it would thank, be. Thank you very much, Ivan. So now the follow-up would be, so who will be paying or covering for this cost? That's going to be whoever buys it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, to piggyback on what Dan was saying, um, as in common in any real estate transaction, uh, that that cleanup cost would either be on um, the controlling entity, uh, which is a railroad currently, or whomever buys that land to develop it's, it. It's you absolutely know? not taxpayer. It's not going to be on the taxpayer dime. It's a private transaction. Um, there's no government entities involved in the land purchase or sale or anything like that. So it would be a private developer and the railroad negotiating who's going to do that cleanup and, you know, the cost associated in the in the sales transaction. It's that simple. Thank you very much. So and another terminology that the voters, they want to get clarification on, that is the eminent domain. And what uh, is eminent domain and is eminent domain part of Measure A or Measure Y? Sorry. I can talk a little bit about that, maybe some clarity from Michael Tree, but there is no eminent domain. This is all infill project land. So this is existing vacant land in, in the uh, Bowtie area and UR1. Um, you know, it, it's just vacant land right now. So nobody's land is being taken. There is no eminent domain necessary to bring the train here. Um, my understanding that even the path of the train, the railroad tracks of the train, there is no eminent domain even for that. So it's a pretty simple clear project um, that's not going to run into imminent domain and removing people from their homes. There is zero of that happening. So, um, you know, the, it's just not necessary. So th there's plenty of land, there's plenty of space, um, even for double tracking the train, I believe, Michael, there's enough room for that. So that's more efficient, efficiently run, but um, there is no imminent domain as a part of, you know, Measure Y or as a part of uh, Valley Link Light Rail itself. Yeah, I'd say that's correct, Dino, you know, and, and certainly all these plans, we're, we're working with UP on them, and they're certainly contingent on uh, their approval, uh, but there's lots of right-of-way, and so, uh, uh, like I mentioned early on, this is a unique transportation project in that it is entirely within existing transportation rights-of-way, so m minimal uh, eminent domain, certainly none that we've identified in San Joaquin County. Thank you very much, Dino and Michael, for clarifying this. So as this project is being proposed in the vicinity or in the downtown area, so how do you think that it will help with the downtown revitalization efforts? Uh, it's it's the catalyst that, be, that we've been looking for for years. Um, I, I think, 
you look at what TCCA has done, Tracy City Center Association has done and accomplished over the last 10 years, I think most people will be impressed and, and happy with what we've been able to do. We've brought restaurants, we've brought retail, we've brought events, the Grand Theater, um, the Downtown Plaza, so much has happened in those 10 years. Um, that has happened relatively organically, um, but to take it to the next level, and we hear this every day, we want to be like so-and-so. Why can't we have this? Why can't, you know, the Trader Joe's of the world? Um, you have to have a catalyst for that to happen. This is a catalyst of epic opportunity that we will only see probably once in our lifetime. Um, I think we've all been watching the, the bow tie sit there empty with tumbleweeds for the last 20, 30, 40 years. Um, this will bring people downtown. It will allow them to work, live, shop, play, dine downtown. That's the whole point of this. Um, it's a catalyst for that to happen. It's a catalyst for business expansion. We talk about Valley Link in and of itself as a conduit for things to happen. And that works both ways. I think uh, Michael and, and Rhodesia talked about, it's not just people going over the hill, it's attracting those people back over here from that hill as part of our workforce. We talk about education levels that we want to increase here. So, you know, those workers are coming from somewhere. And then you look further down the line, it's like, you know, other people want, believe it or not, people, a lot of people want to work in Tracy. You know, it's coming from the east to get here in and of itself, um, you know. So it works in all directions. Um, so, but it's, it's critical if we want downtown Tracy to get to the next level to, you know, help us uh, move on some of this infill um, land that's, you know, sp uh, sporadically throughout our downtown, some of the vacant buildings throughout our downtown, this will help us to, to help fill those um, empty spots. Yeah. And if I'm, if I may piggyback um, on that. So I was on planning commission before I got on city council for seven years and we brought in the consultant that actually redesigned and redeveloped downtown Livermore. Everyone was asking, how can we make this Tracy downtown more like a downtown Livermore? I will say what Tika has done has been in spite of the, con the con conditions that we have to be able to, you know, get these restaurants like their downtown um, developers or, or business owners, property owners are working really hard to do that because they're putting that synergy together. But we knew years ago when we got that plan on what it needs, what we need to do to revitalize downtown, that we needed more density, that we needed more synergy, that we needed more opportunity to have live work opportunities so that downtown would have an automatic client. The problem without having the residences close to the um, the shops is there's really no one to shop there. And having a bedroom community where everyone's gone to work in the day um, in the Bay Area, we definitely don't have those opportunities. So people like me who do work in town, we can't get a restaurant on a Monday because they have to take off Sunday and Monday because there's not enough people in that area, living in that area to actually be able to um, this, you know, see, um, feed those businesses to keep them going. So they have to schedule themselves in a way that works for them to keep their business going because they love our community and they want to be in that downtown. But we have done a lot in spite of not really having um, the right climate down there. And so that is what, you know, what we're putting out there. And we've known this for many years because we had several different uh, consultant reports, like I said, and, you know, we were trying to put the um, conditions there before there was a train. And now the train is requiring those same conditions we knew about more than 10 years ago. So at this point, it's just, it's really not up to people who understand and, and know uh, what's at stake. It's really up to making sure that um, we get people like Mr. Tree to really kind of dispel some of the myths and, and let people decide for themselves so that maybe we can finally have the, the things that people have been asking for. And a little bit to add on, uh, Rudy's 100% right. Uh, we talked to our consultant, our downtown consultant, and the three pillars that that we look at and what you know we do, what we have control over is um, higher density residential. And I think the critical thing here is this: the residential that we're looking at for the downtown bow tie, it's residential that we don't have. It's different types of residential. It's live work lofts. It's it's not single family homes necessarily that you know, we were used to. It's it's different types of product that are good for the younger generation. It's people that want a more urban type situation, um, but it's those rooftops that that provide the walkability for our downtown that we're critically missing. And Rhodesia hit it on the nail. It's like, we've got, you know, businesses that are closed on Sundays and Mondays. 
they wouldn't be closed if it was profitable, I, I assure you. So what they're trying to do is they're, you know, they're picking the days that they're the busiest that it makes the most sense. We want them to extend into the days and into the nights and all of the, you know, all of the weekends, you know, so we have life every single day of the week. We're just not quite there yet. We're better, but we're not quite there. Um, the other two pillars that I you know, mentioned, uh, re restaurants, we're doing a really good job of attracting those businesses and then culture and art based activities and events. So those we have a little bit more control over. We have the, you know, uh, Gem of Downtown, which is the uh, uh, Grand Theater Center for the Arts. Um, we do in conjunction with City of Tracy, we do, you know, tons of events all year long, obviously not during COVID times, but, you know, in a traditional year, we, we would almost be having an event every single uh, weekend of the summer. So all of these things play come into play to, to, to bring to life our downtown, but housing is a critical component. Um, so that's why we're really focused on uh, a different type of housing for for downtown and uh, you know um, it that synergy is absolutely critical for us as a catalyst for uh, downtown going forward well, th thank you very much Dino Rodicia just tying into the aspect of uh, downtown revitalization with the uh, measure Y so now we understand what measure Y is what transit orient development is so now thinking from an other aspect so what will happen if uh, the measure why is not passed to our trains. I can speak to that a little bit. Um, I, I think that there's a potential for two scenarios to happen. Um, Michael may be able to tell me more um, about this, but what we've what we've seen going on with the other cities along the line and with their TODs. Um, if Measure Y does not pass and that land remains vacant for a period of time, I think that the first scenario is that um, until uh, River Islands or Lather comes online that Valley Link may um, have terminus at the Altamont, which would cause um, all the commuters that would utilize it through us to come through town to get to the west side of town to use it. Um, and the other bigger one I think is more realistic um, and, and a little tragic would be that um, the rest of the TODs do come online and the Valley Link runs the rail, runs its um, passage, and it passes through Tracy and it doesn't stop. And it goes from Livermore over the Altamont, it goes to River Islands and it goes to um, Lathrop. And we have the impacts of the train passing through town, uh, but we don't get the benefit of a stop. Well, thank you very much, Vin. So in other ways, we can say that uh, there will be a station and there will not be a station that depends on the vote on measure Y. so true and the uh, sorry to interrupt one thing to remember too is that um the housing component that we're talking about with measure y that is a requirement of the valley link so by voting no that doesn't mean that that housing component is going to go away in any future iterations of these types of projects it's still going to be a requirement of valley link it's still something you're going to have to grapple with at whatever time in the future you decide that you do want to take it up and is that going to be too late in the game where the entire valley link rail system is online and, and it's, and we're it's, a, to, like, it's the measure why the the component for housing it's critical because it allows for funding that's really what we're talking about is without the funding you can't build anything unless somebody has an extra billion dollars sitting around um applying for you know state and federal funding isn't going to happen unless you meet their terms and conditions so that's you know what we're trying to make sure everybody understands is that you know we all want the train and all of that but we have to play by the rules and and the funding mechanisms that are in place whether you like it or not that's just kind of the way it is and like vince said you can keep trying and changing this and changing that but ultimately it comes down to the same thing that you have to have that funding to build the train uh, maybe you'll qualify for some funding that'll get you a certain point over the altima maybe over to to west tracy somewhere but you know that would be a horrible situation because then you're going to have all of the commuters funneling to that closest station, wherever it may be. And, you know, it's going to create a nightmare um, versus having it spread out into North Lathrop, into River Islands. You know, they aren't driving all the way to Tracy to get that nearest point. Um, so Michael Tree might might have a little bit, you know, better um, response, but uh, that's the way we see it is, you know, it's just critical that we have the entire system. We get funding for the entire system so that we don't run into these unintended consequences. Yeah, I'd only just make a couple of comments. Certainly it's a board policy that's been adopted that each of these train stations within the corridor would have a minimum of 2,200 units. 
the board really uh, has a, an incredible focus on getting to the ACE North Lathrop station. Uh, that becomes an early connection for uh, high-speed rail. It becomes a, a really nice multimodal connection for the ACE system and the Valley Link uh, system. So, uh, you know, I, I just think it's really important that uh, to have a station in downtown Tracy, the policymakers and the community really needs to focus in on how to accomplish that. Thank you very much, Michael. So then uh, we all are also aware of Measure M. So can you please share something about what Measure M is and is Measure by some somehow linked with Measure M or those are standalone entities? I, I can answer a little bit for that one because it's a legal difference. Uh, they're completely different entities and essentially the focus of Measure Y is a transportation initiative. So the whole purpose is to meet the, regu the regulations and the requirements to fulfill the connection to transportation. Like, like we just heard earlier, if we do not meet those requirements, we will not have a station here in Tracy. So that's the focus, that's the intent. We, we wrote the language for Measure Y in particular, having an understanding what happened with Measure M and why it failed and so because we wanted to be as successful as possible. So we had this discussion among city council about the 2,200 units. And were we just going to say, go leave it at that? Or were we going to be more specific? And we decided to be a bit more specific. And so what we included is what is called inclusionary housing. And so we set uh, requirements such that we would have to have those affordable housing uh, components. Those did not exist with Measure M. Measure M was what was called affordable by design, which is based on a purely market-based strategy. And so what it does is in order to compete with the market, it limited the size of the properties so that they would become more affordable, but you're getting a smaller product. It was based purely on the market. What the difference that we made with the 2200 units in the inclusionary housing was saying for any developer, if you want to build in this region that we're de designating, you will be required to build these lower rate housing units. We add, again, it's based on the median income of Tracy and it's at the 100% of that median income level and the 80% of that median income level. So it's actually affordable to people who actually live here in town. And it's, and a, think it's a government regulation, it's a restriction but it's required for any building of any unit there. It is very different than Measure M, which has made it smaller based on a market strategy. So those are the kind of legal distinctions. To so add what, that, okay. Sorry about that, Rhodesia. Just quickly to add to what Dan was saying too is, um, you can see both maps for Measure M and Measure Y online, uh, downtowntracytod.org has it. Um, and you can see uh, Tracy Press ran an article in August, 2018 that shows the map for Measure Y. Um, they are vastly different maps. I mean, you don't have to be an expert to realize how different they are in the identification of the land that was going to be utilized. Um, Measure M had parcels um, all over the city and mostly outside the city. Um, and Measure Y is strictly focused into the Bowtie area. It's an infill project to prevent sprawl. Okay, and I, I think it's really important to make the distinction um, between Measure M and Measure Y that Measure M was a private um, developer who got signatures. Um, the community, they got enough signatures in the community that they wanted to put together a um, an affordable housing ballot measure where they were going to put together all of the different parameters. The, the city didn't have any control over that um, and it had nothing to do with transit. It was, you know, someone saying, hey, we want to be able to answer this affordable housing thing. So we're going to get signatures and we're going to try to do it by design. The city had no control over it. The city did not put the ballot measure forward. They actually collected signatures. This is very different. It's why, um, and it's because we as a council talked about, do we want to put this to the voters to try and meet the requirements for um, the rail, to be able to have a rail stop here in our community? And what was added is because uh, transit-oriented development is known, it, it gets pricey. 
Tra people want transit-oriented development. They want to live in a place where there's energy and there's trails and you know and uh, rail and restaurants. And out of concern that it would actually raise the price of housing so much that it would price people out of the neighborhoods they grew up in, um, and that it would actually you know start you know pushing people out and displacing people. We added um, some measure, some some uh, language to the measure that would put into policy um, anti-gentrification and workforce affordable housing. So that's where that 10% came from. It was not a requirement of Valley Link. It was us making sure that we were looking out um, to make to ensure that people aren't pushed out just because we want to be able to have the train stop come there because it is going to, if it is successful, it will bring um, a lot of opportunity that's going to raise the the income levels of the downtown um, housing area. So if people are going to want to live there. <laughs> so, so that's why we went ahead and, and added that um, those protective measures. But M was a, a signature collecting, put it on the ballot. Why is us looking to meet a need? And we put this, the council put this forward for the voters to consider. So th thank you very much, Rudisha. So though the Tracy is a increasing growing town, but the citizens, they like the small town feel. So the next thing in mind is, so will Measure Y keep the aesthetics of the historic downtown district? Yeah, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, you know, again, we are absolutely 100% um, sensitive to, to the historic nature of downtown. Uh, we live there, we work there, that's our job. Um, uh, many of us are also property owners downtown and uh, there are a number of historic buildings downtown. So I think, you know, the aesthetics, I think the feel, um, that's all gonna have public input. Um, there's a general plan, there's a downtown specific plan, there's a TOD plan, and then there's local zon zoning designations that, you know, all have a say in how the look and feel of downtown is gonna be. Um, you know, with that said, uh, you know, we want things to be sympathetic to our downtown. You look at the transit station as an example, that's a city project built, you know, about 10 years ago, something like that. And, you know, it's not a modern building by any stretch of the imagination. It's a new building, um, but it was built to look like the historic area that it sits in, um, you know, Spanish style, those kinds of things. So, you know, there's a way to do all of this that will blend in with the existing nature and design and historic nature of, of our downtown, absolutely. Um, there's, you know, uh, infrastructure costs that that are, you know, going to be handled by developer impact fees that can help with that. So there's there's so much that can happen, um, and there's so much opportunity for input. This is the very very beginning. It's a trigger point for all of the things coming down the road to happen. So by no stretch of the imagination is anything decided, is anything designed. There are concepts out there like, hey, this is kind of the direction we'd like to see, but by no stretch is this a master plan community that is shovel ready once Measure Y passes, that's what's gonna happen. That's not the case here. This is just a trigger point to say, hey, can we go to the next step, knowing that we can you know, build, knowing that we can do this, knowing we have the uh, availability of, um, you know, uh, the housing component, which is critical to the funding, we can look and go forward. But yeah, we are absolutely 100% sympathetic and uh, uh, we wouldn't want it any other way. We're not trying to, to redo downtown and, and give it a makeover. We want to make sure that we, we look at uh, the historic nature of what's there. Absolutely 100%. Yeah, I think it's important to note too, uh, to add on to what Dino was saying, it is actually written into the ballot measure itself to preserve and maintain the community character uh, that was taken into account when it was written. Right, and and the other, the, the final point on this is that these things would have to be uh, put into a plan. It would need to go before planning commission and some components would after planning commission go to the council to ensure that the community character is protected. So. Um, that at the point that if, if it's approved, that's when you start having the conversations about what does the community character, you know, what does preserving community character look like? And the transit example is is very, uh, is a great example. It's like, you know, we, we got modern things, um, but they don't have to look like, you know, San Francisco brand new skyscrapers. <laughs> we can still keep with that same energy that people love about our town, so. Thank you very much. So one more thing. So we have is there is a terminology called work 
workforce housing in Measure Y. So can you please explain what this terminology means? So workforce housing is kind of what I described a little bit earlier. What it does is acknowledge that basically any good financial person is going to tell you that the housing component of your income should be 25 to 30% of your income. So instead of kind of just basing uh, it based solely on a market, what workforce housing does is it, re it, it requires it to be at set levels for the people that make a certain amount of income in your town. So it takes the, that baseline, that median income in your town, which in the city of Tracy happens to be about 88,000. And then it sets it for the people at that income level and says, okay, we're going to now provide those housing opportunities for your level of income. And then what we did is also we had the 80%. So it's a little bit lower to make sure that we're providing a mixed type of housing to, for our citizens, because that's what we've kept on hearing that, you know, we need more than one type of housing. Um, and so what it does is it provides for that, but it's created in such a way to provide that opportunity, particularly for that missing middle piece for the kind of that middle class uh, income that doesn't currently exist. But in order to get there, you have to kind of write it legally in a certain way. And, and that's what we've done. And, and absolutely, we, we hear a lot about, oh, it's low income housing. This is not low income housing. This is uh, significant incomes for people that, that's why we're, it's workforce housing. It's, uh, you know, it's to allow the people that work here to live here. And uh, by, by no stretch is this, you know, section eight or low income housing, you know, so when you hear that, it, it's absolutely false information. It's uh, AMI, you know, adjusted median income for, for this project. So um, it's it's sure. relatively high. Go ahead, Rosie, sorry. Oh, no, I was gonna like unlawyer it because <laughs> after Dan spoke, <laughs> I was like, let's unlawyer this thing and just say it's workforce housing. It's the people who work here should be able to live here. Think your teachers, your kids' teachers, right? So many of our teachers that work here, they don't live here and they, they tell us that they can't afford here to live here. They go to Manteca, they go to the next town over. Think of the people who, you know, do services with you. Those are people who make a reasonable enough income but cannot afford to live in our town. So they're nearby in neighboring communities, but we want to make sure that people who uh, work here can actually afford to live here. And that's by creating a middle price um, housing level for those people so that, you know, we have plenty of $600,000 homes. We have plenty of, you know, <laughs> I think we got some $700,000 homes now. So we want to be able to make sure that our teachers who live here, the people who are now considered essential, who work at our grocery stores can, uh, can uh, afford to live here as well. That's what workforce housing is, is keeping your workforce in your community. That's taking more cars off the road in and of itself, but it's also respecting the fact that you have people who are contributing to your community and deserve an opportunity to live here. Thank you very much for sharing that. So these were the questions that we got from the citizens to get clarification on this measure. So before we adjourn, so is there anything that you want to add? So some relevant information for our voters to understand this measure better? I think just one important thing is that to make sure that the community is always going to have input and involvement through this process. Like I said, this is the very beginning of this process. It's not a shovel ready, you know, developer ready by any stretch. There's no developers even involved or have identified um, being involved. So I want to make sure that the community understands that even though this has been been worked on for you know a number of years, there's a number of uh, you know, policies and, and cleanup that looked at back in 2007, 2008, to try to get us to the point where we are right now. Um, you know, by no stretch of the imagination is this set in stone. Um, you have plenty of opportunity for input. We just have to have that trigger point to start the process. And this allows us to do that. Yeah, I'd like to add a quick thing to, uh, to what Dina was saying is that um, this is a Tracy measure, and this is for the citizens of Tracy to determine our future. Um, however, simply seeing uh, everyone that's on this particular dais, you know, uh, Mr. Tree, and Mr. Gutierrez, and council members, um, to help people understand that this is a much bigger project than um, something that is only going to stem from here. It's going to be great for us, but we're trying to become more interconnected um, with the entire valley. And this is, like Dino said, this is that first step forward um, to become connected. Uh, with everyone and i think it's a great start 
and I'll just add on, I think what's really important about this project is that this is democracy in action. This is going to the voters on the ballot, and it's the voters that will decide. So we put all this work together, and we believe that this is for the best, that this, this will be, the Valley Link will be that connectivity that we need, but ultimately it's up to the voters, and so they'll decide. And so we're looking forward to implementing the voters' voice. Yes, I would actually agree that I, I feel like uh, exactly the way, the same sentiment that this is really the voters' opportunity. It's important that they do their homework. Um, there's a lot of you know talk out there, but I will say um, the good thing about this measure so far is that it has brought people who have you know traditionally maybe not even agreed on a whole lot of things, but we can agree on this opportunity needs to be put to, before the voters. And so um, I think it's important for people to go ahead and, and do their homework and check out what the requirements are and um, also, what the protections are for this community. I think that there's um, there's always kind of a mistrust when it comes to development, right? I served on the Planning Commission, and you always hear, you know, the, the development words like a dirty word, but really, um, you need to figure out if this really works for the community by just doing your homework. Um, and understand that there's certain things that the law requires in regards to infrastructure before any housing is built to begin with. So, you know, there's just, um, I just, we just really need people to do their homework before they vote. Um, and what I love is that some places you go around town and you'll see no and yes signs on the same property. So I think that in and of itself is going to make people say there's something about this that I need to look into. It's not up to the council members who put this before you. We just put this as an opportunity for you to um, be able to say yes or no to meeting the requirement. Now, ultimately, it's up to you, the citizens, to decide if this does or does not work for our community. Thank you very much. So we have diverse expertise and you spared your time to provide the relevant information. And as Dino has mentioned that this is not a day's work, so it has lots of efforts, lots of background information. So I'm hoping after listening to this information, so citizens, they will have the follow-up questions. So will you please share any website or any portal where the citizens can go and find the relevant information or if they have any questions so whom they can reach out to clarify um there's a number of sites you can always go to our uh, tracycitycenter.com site for downtown tracy we have a page on uh, just the tod topic in and of itself um, the city of tracy has a tracy downtown tod.org site that has uh the language of the uh of the uh, uh, plan in there. Um, you can look on our Facebook, social media, Downtown Tracy. Um, there's discussions going on, but uh, I agree with Rhodesia. Just make sure that you're well informed and you know fact from fiction. Um, but you know, if anybody has any questions, you know, they can always reach out to us, um, tracycitycenter.com, um, and you know, we'll be happy to answer what we can. And just as a, a quick follow up in regard to the Valley Link project. Uh, folks can go to www.valleylinkrail.com. Uh, you'll find on the website lots of information about the project, including a quick fact sheet that you can print out, give to friends, uh, also our TOD policy. And uh, so it's a great place to go to learn about the project. But th thank you very much, everybody. So our main perspective was to share the information. And as you shared, follow-up questions are more than welcome. So from our platform and being a host, so I will encourage and request the voters to please explore and ask questions to clarify. So and based on your information, your clarification, make an informed decision for November 3rd. Thank you very much all for joining and for your time and providing the valuable information to the Tracy citizens. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks.